flowers in me The flesh that's covering me Brings me down to my knees Welcome to Sermons in the Park a ministry exploring biblical truth from the Word of God, focusing on the truths that help us in our daily walk with Christ in every aspect of our lives. Now, here is your Reverend, Jamie McCaskill. Hello, brothers and sisters, and welcome back to an all-new Sermons in the Park. As always, I am your Reverend Jamie McCaskill. I want to take this time once again, like I do each and every Sunday, to just welcome you back and thank you for being here. It's always a pleasure and a joy to get to do these with you each and every week. Um, first off, uh, if, you're local, if you're local to Fostoria, I just want to let you know that my first set of books have sold out, but I do have more coming in Monday, so if that's something you're interested in, please get in contact with me on Facebook, Twitter, email, wherever. Um, so, um, there is a book signing coming up on the 7th, let me make sure, my calendar here the 17th uh local store here bougie on a budget they contacted me and set up a date we're going to be having a official book signing party there there will be popcorn and drink and everything so if that's something you're interested in that will be at 10 a or sorry at 11 a.m at bougie on a budget here in fostoria if you want addresses and all that contact me i'll get it for you so but that's not why we're here what we're here for is a lot more important than my little book signing and that is the, the word of the Lord. So let's bow our heads and thank our Heavenly Father for all the great and wonderful gifts He's given us. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you once again for everything. You know, it's... I'm, you know, honestly, us humans do not have the capacity to understand how much you give us, God, and we... And so it, it's impossible for us to thank you enough. But thank you, Father, for everything. Food, water air um little microbes in our body that keep us going i mean there's so much that you do that we do not understand and we thank you father we thank you for family and friends and loved ones and even that enemy that we are told to love we thank you for them everything that you give us is wonderful and we it all works out in your favor and we thank you father in the name of your son jesus christ i want to thank you for our savior jesus everything everything that's given to us is by your grace and we love you and we thank you in the name of your son jesus christ amen so today i want to talk about something um you see the title you see the thumbnail of the video. You see the thumbnail over on the podcast. If you're over watching it on YouTube, you see the picture because it's the, the thumbnail is actually the video. Um, so you know what we're talking about here. And it's an old saying that, honestly, when you we really don't hear it as much anymore. But it is still a philosophy that worldly people subscribe to today. It's this philosophy that is all about self-fulfillment, right? Instant gratification, as well as pride in yourself. Now, not only does this specific philosophy teach you that your desires are okay, but that we should also pursue those desires, you know, all you have to do is spend a little bit of time on social media and eventually you will see this very philosophy everywhere. And not that long ago, people would actually post the phrase that is the title of this video, and that is YOLO. Which is, it's essentially just a saying, right, that means no regrets, which people have also posted and get the tattoos on themselves saying no regrets or the hilarious ones where they the the the, the tattooist will spell it wrong and they'll say no regrets or something like that right that saying itself yolo 
literally sums up the philosophy of this very generation, doesn't it? But also a lot of the generation that has raised these people, which sadly <laughs> is my own generation. For those of you who do not even know what YOLO is, I'm going to try to explain it to you, okay? It's essentially just an acronym, meaning, uh, you know, the first letter of every word put into it cut down and then made into a word or a catchphrase if you will and that means you only live once not only does that phrase sum up the the mindset of this generation a, a generation by the way that is all about being self-centered seeking immediate gratification but it comes from, you know, these modern progressive preachers who distort the Bible. There are two verses that I think they use for this, and we're going to look at those two verses. The first one is uh, James chapter 4, verse 14, and it reads like this. It says, Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanishes away. Now, that's one of the verses they use. And the other one, um, I believe, like I said, these are just two that I believe they use. But the set, and I'm sure there's more. But the second one that I looked at, that I look at and believe they use is Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. It reads like this. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Now, both of these verses are, are what they're supposed to be used for is to teach us not to hold back, okay? Because we only live once. So, you, what it's saying is that you should do everything in your power, everything that you can to serve the Lord. That's what those verses are saying. So when you look at it from that point of view, when you look at it that, that way, which is the honest right way, YOLO is not necessarily an unbiblical thing. Okay? Look what Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 6, verse 34. What we're reading here is Jesus reminding us of something. He says, Take Therefore, no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Okay? And then through the, through the apostle Paul, we see another one where Jesus tells us something. Right? He tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2, it says, For he saith, meaning Jesus, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold now the accepted time. Behold now the day of salvation. Do you see? It's saying, don't wait. Don't hold back. But as I said, these verses are reminding you that life is fleeting, right? They're trying to remind us to do what? To stay focused on Christ and the gospel. That we shouldn't fear the consequences that we're going to face if we do it. Okay? But you see, that's not what people are doing. When someone shouts YOLO, they're doing this to do something crazy they're cheering this person to go and do something that's immoral something that's irresponsible and yes trust me being from louisiana i know for a fact doing something stupid and dangerous when you honestly think about that phrase what yolo is encouraging someone to do is to do just just forget what forget about god forget about him Forget about his rules, right? Forget about God's loving law and his judgment. That's what they're saying. And just like anything else that promotes this world, 
It says that we need to make a decision and not even think about what's going to happen. Don't use common sense. Okay? Some of the best advice that you can give someone who doesn't have a godly influence in their life is that if they, if they do not know what the right thing is, ask someone who's living a worldly life and then do the exact opposite. Because you see, the worldly way of doing this is almost always contradictory to what the Bible would tell us, what the Word of God says. And that mantra, YOLO, well, it's no different. Here on Sermons in the Park, we've spoken about this over and over again. But as a Christian, our life should be mo motivated by the great love that God has for us. A love that is sacrificial. We should be guided by what? The Holy Spirit. We should desire to magnify Jesus. To exalt Jesus. And brothers and sisters, that is a goal that sadly we have not attained yet. We have not fully reached it here in this life. We all know that we're guilty, right? We've all violated the laws of God in ways that we're unaware of, in ways that sadly we're painfully aware of. We know that our redemption is in Jesus. We know that he is our advocate, right? He's, our, he, he's, our, he's the one who restored us. Jesus is our mighty counselor. And when I think about the things, you know, um, I find that I, the things that I've done, right, I start to remember all of them and, and, I, and the many regrets that I've had, things that have caused me to seek Jesus in my own life, right? That caused me to repent for my sins that I've committed. And, and I've committed those sins against God and God alone, just like David says. But what does the world want us to do, right? Because they want us to have unrestricted access to things that are ungodly. That old cliche that we just spoke about, no regrets. Because guess what? You only live once. This is an assault on the judgment of God because it's encouraging people to rebel, which is what the word sin means. You were rebelling. But not only that, it's also a disregard of everyone else because people will suffer because we're being thoughtless, we're being selfish. I think it's extremely absurd to believe that you can go you can go and stand before an almighty God and have no regrets. Cuz trust me, when that day comes, you will have regrets. All of those regrets will be your selfish ambition. I really hope that all the Christians who watch and listen don't follow that mantra of YOLO. Because it's filled with fleshly and temporal desires. I'm sure, like I was just talking about a little bit ago, all of us have a lot of decisions in our own past that we, let's just say, un, that were unwise. But I pray that we're never fooled by this world and forget what the true costs are. It's not unheard of in this world for people to, to stand up and remind us to, to be thankful for what we've, you know, what we've gone through, right? They usually tell us that these choices are what have made us into who we are. And I'm not going to argue the point that in a way, yes, that's true, because it is. We can find our relationship with the Lord growing 
after you know all of the trials and tribulations that we go through. Like, look at my life. When I look at my own life as a minister today, I'm very thankful for what I have, right? I have a wife that God gave to me. You know, I have sons that I get to have a relationship with. I have three sons, Scott, James, and Clay. Scott, I don't get to see, but, you know, we're, uh, at, we're getting into uh, having a real good relationship. And I have my two sons, uh, James and Clay, here with me. I have a great relationship with my sons. God is very gracious and very merciful. He does not show partiality, though. He doesn't give me these things because I'm a minister. He doesn't give me these things because, you know, I, 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 he gives everyone a beautiful gift. Many beautiful gifts. The first one he gave to each and every one of you is the, is the breath of life. But that's not the most important gift that he gave to you. He also gave us his only begotten son. I want to make sure that I get this through to you. Even in God's abundant mercy and grace, I don't care what any preacher tells you. I don't care what anyone tells you because it's not the truth. The Bible tells us God is not accepting of a life of sin. Looking back at my own life, I can tell you that there, there are a lot of things I wish I did differently. If I, if I had not done them, my, my life would have been so much better. If I had known Jesus more independently, or I should say intimately. Each of us have a moment in our life, right? That if we had changed that one little thing, our life would have been differently. If you know me well enough, you talk to me in person and stuff, you'll know that I call those moments flashpoints. If we had not done that one thing, whatever it is, if we had not held on to that one sin, think about how mature our life would be in Jesus today compared to where it is. Every decision that we have made has affected us in some way, even if we're not aware of it. That's why we should willingly live in Christ. Give him every aspect of our lives. It's okay to look back at your past every so often, okay? You know, to, to look back at our past and ask God to, you know, reveal wickedness that, that might be inside of us. But we shouldn't live there. If you do, it's what a lot of scientists like to call it a rubber band effect. If you, if you, if you sit there and you look back at that moment and just concentrate on that moment, you will beat yourself up. You will become so unhappy about the life that you have now, a new and active life in Christ. Look, what, look at what Jesus tells us through Paul in Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 to 14. Not as though I have already attained, either were already perf perfect. Let me start over. Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 to 14. Not as though I have already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but that one thing I do. I, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth into those things which are before, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Basically, if you, if you sit there and you keep living in the past, you can find yourself going to extremes. You will not accept the forgiveness that Jesus promised, washing us from all of our sins. I heard a preacher once tell it like, if it, you're in a race. 
you can't win the race if you're worried about the people in the stands. You need to keep running forward. That's why they put blinders on horses when they have them in, on, a, on a, uh, a carriage or whatever. That way they're only looking forward. I liked what Titus said because he reminds us to recall where we were, okay? Knowing that we're no better than anyone else while reminding us that our transformation is by the Spirit of God, which develops into worship towards the Lord, okay? Serving our neighbor, dying for you know, dying to ourselves. You see, regretting your decisions is a good thing. It is biblical. As long as you do not allow it to 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 cause you constant torment. Because that removes the security that we have as you know a born again Christian. You need to remember something. That's not who you are anymore. You're a new creation in Christ. You know where and what God saved you from. You see, as a Christian, we acknowledge the gift that Jesus gave us. We're allowed to live our lives. Not like the worldly, you know, who, who will make an emotional decision, a nonsensical decision, okay? But with the fear that leads to, to, to heavenly wisdom. Here's a thought, okay? Instead of using that term YOLO to, let's say, justify worldly decisions, okay? Why don't you use it to remind yourself to serve God faithfully, right? Now, you might ask me, oh, preacher, what do you mean by that? Well, you see, I'm a recovered alcoholic, so please allow me to use this example. Let's say a friend invites you to a party. You find out that there's going to be alcohol there. Instead of saying, sure, why not, YOLO, why not say something like, no thanks. After all, I only live once. I want to honor the Lord each and every moment of every day. Why not do that? Instead of continuing to, to make choices that pull us further and further away from God, why not use our life, the life that, as you clearly said, we only live once, as precious as that is, to understand and know Jesus, bearing the fruits of his kingdom for his glory and not your own. Seriously, as I said, YOLO is used so many times to encourage us to, to do what? To ignore the word of God, to ignore the judgment that we're going to face. But it also has the potential to, to do the exact opposite, doesn't it? Just like how God uses the things that the devil, you know, the devil means it for a bad, but God uses it to fulfill his own will. In this world that's flooded with philosophies that are crammed with things like, oh, reincarnation, mysticism, tolerance, and all that other garbage that the world comes up with. YOLO serves as a signpost. <laughs> it points right back to the Bible and the one true God. Just like we read in Hebrews chapter 9, verses 27 and 28. It says, And as it is appointed unto men once to die... But after this, the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Now, while I was doing my research for this sermon, I found a, uh, a poem um, by a guy named C.T. Stubb. 
um, I liked it. I, th I felt it would be really good to read here today for this. Um, it, it's the, this, this particular poem is called Only One Life Twill Soon Be Passed. And I, as I said, it, it's by a man named uh, C.T. Stubb. Stud, sorry. Not, I said Stubb. C.T. Stud. Making a note of it here, so I put it in the... Uh, under this uh, this sermon on YouTube and stuff. I'm going to read the poem now. Only one life, yes, only one. Soon will, it, soon will its fleeting hours be done. Then in that day, my Lord, to meet and stand before his judgment seat. Only one life, t'was soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Now, looking forward, that is a desire that, as a believer, we should all have. Jesus is our prize. He's not something that we get for something that we do, okay? No. It's a, it, this is given to us by a completed work of God that we see spelled out for us so nicely if you go read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we're not going to read it today, it's a whole chapter, but go read 1 Corinthians chapter 15. When we look back, we should be encouraged. It shall motivate us, if you will, to not think higher about ourselves than we honestly should. We actually serve a God who is humble. God is constantly spelling things out for us in, in this ever-changing culture with the solid and unchanging word of God. His mercy endures forever. So instead of hanging on to YOLO as an escape from reality, the reality of God and the reality of choices that we make, how about instead we remember the one true God and his goodness and his grace? Remember to, to choose him and his word over everything else that this old sinful and fallen world has to offer. Because the, what God has to offer is so much greater and so much be more beautiful. I want to thank you for joining me here. I hope this one reaches someone um this one was pressing on me that i needed to make it so um i hope you enjoyed it i hope that you got something out of this i pray the lord continues to bless and keep you as always guys if you want my book if you want to get a copy of my book preacher or tell a deliverance it's available on amazon um if you need anything from me please email me never think i'm not going to answer you because i will I'm always here for y'all. God bless you. I love y'all. I'll talk to you soon. You have been listening to Sermons in the Park with Reverend Jamie McCaskill. Be sure to follow us on YouTube, BitChute, and Rumble. And as always, thank you for listening. There's joy for the morning. Sinner, be still. Earth has no sorrow. Heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow, heaven can't heal. So